gather around the table once again for another session of Dungeons and Dracus. And happy Monday, everybody. So last time we took on the first ever bit of patched content for Wrath of the Lich King, and it was a big one. It was a doozy. People loved it. But I missed one little portion of the 3.1 patch that I kind of saved to explain here. So not only did we get um, Ulduar, we also got another awesome thing that now is, is bigger in Legion. We got dual spec for the first time in Wrath of the Lich King, or in 3.1 Secrets of Ulduar, which was kind of broken, so we didn't really utilize it that much back in my day. Uh, but we also had additional daily quests in Crystal Song Forest. Why was that? The dailies were set towards the building of the Argent Tournament. And we actually had a, a set of Argent Tournament grounds set up, or Tyrion had found some in Ice Crown in the northern end, and was going to build a Grand Coliseum where the Argent Crusade could train for the day they would be able to, to assault the gates of Ice Crown Citadel. But in the meantime, we had to build the place first. So in 3.1, you got dailies where you would collect stone and wood and other things, uh, other essential elements to be able to start creating the tournament grounds. And then patch 3.2 happened, which was kind of a filler patch because Ice Crown was taken a while and they wanted to, everybody wanted the Blizzard to put in their best foot forward to do their best efforts to make Ice Crown an epic experience to, to wrap up Wrath of the Lich King. So they actually needed this filler patch in between that some people like, some people hate, called Call of the Crusade, which was the finished Argent Tournament Grounds, uh, but also allowed for us to have not only a new raid, but a new five-man dungeon as well. So without further ado, let's actually go ahead and check out the Argent Tournament Grounds. I really wish, and maybe if I can find some screenshots of it, I'll show you like some of the quests that we had to do while building the Tournament Grounds. But all you have to do is when you hit level 77, you talk to this guy, Jean-Pierre Paulain. What can I do for you? The Argent Tournament has begun in the northern reaches of Ice Crown, Monk. If you've, uh, if you've yet to find your way there, I can pay your way. The more we have participating in the melee, the stronger we'll be when we strike against the Lich King. All right, I'll take the flight. The so we'll go ahead and fly there. But yeah, right below us is where you would start collecting stone and wood and the other necessary elements to begin building the Argent Tournament grounds. And the Tournament grounds were actually an awesome way to do a couple of things. One... Um, you actually could purchase heirloom items. Now, you could purchase them before, but they were absurdly expensive. <coughs> this actually allowed for you to win, because the Argent Tournament Grounds were a daily hub. If you completed dailies, you would get Crusader Seals, and that would help you be able to secure some heirlooms uh, for your alts. If people don't know what heirlooms are, heirlooms are basically gear that scales up with you as you level up. And... Back in Wrath of the Lich King days, there weren't too many pieces, so you could easily purchase them at the Argent Tournament. The second purpose was, because you had representatives of both the Alliance and the Horde working together in the Argent Crusade as well as the Argent Tournament, this was a great way, if you hadn't already, to boost the reputation of your, the various factions of the Horde or of the Alliance. So in the Horde's case, you could beef up, beef up your reputation with the Orcs of Orgrimmar, the Tauren of Thunder Bluff, the Undead of the Undercity, things like that. And th so that was a really great second purpose. The third purpose obviously was that it was a daily quest hub, but also that it provided additional content while we waited for Ice Crown. It provided a new five-man dungeon, as well as a brand new raid. Now, a lot of people have 50-50 thought, or I I've seen more 60-40, 70-30 going against this raid, but I don't actually hate it because, well, it filled the gap. And frankly, people were still working on Ulduar by this point. And here is the Argent Tournament ground. So as you can see, it's all nice and pretty. And you will get occasional cutscenes because there was weekly events of them trying to capture these amazing beasts for you to take on in the, <coughs> in the Colosseum itself to prove your worth. So let's go ahead and grab the flight path, but you would eventually have people, you would have cutscenes involving Tyrion Forgering, uh, Varian Rin and Jaina Proudmoore, as well as Thrall and Garrosh. All of them would come here and you would see kind of the struggles that the, the factions were currently going through. But like I was saying, so this is actually how you would do it. You would build up your reputation factions because it would give you additional benefits 
within the Arjun tournament. In fact, if you actually got all five of them, plus um, Exalted with Arjun Crusade, you got yourself a title out of it, and that was pretty cool. Uh, so here are the various Horde factions. So you have Thunder Bluff, you have Silver Moon, you have the Undercity, Orgrimmar, uh, let's see, and then we also have the Senjin Quartermaster, which was for the Darkspear tribe, who now has their kind of own starting area, but back in the day they didn't. And for the for the Alliance, obviously, with Stormwind, Ironforge, Nomuragon, Darnassus for the Night Elves, and the Exodar for the Draenei. So here's the entrance to the raid, but we're actually going to be doing the five-man dungeon today, which is Trial of the Champion. So let's go ahead and step in there. We're going to be stepping in on Heroic. Now, with any patch, there are also obviously some bad things. Like I said, 3.1 had dual spec, and dual spec didn't work yet. So we, it's not the dual spec or the tri spec you're used to now. It was way different. But in Trial of the Champion... Oh, we, actually, let's go ahead and take this, uh, this quest. Champion of the Tournament. With this tournament, we grow ever stronger to our final confrontation with the Lich King. Drakfu, fight with valor and honor. Every fighter here has gathered for the common good. Together, we will stop Arthas. So this is from High Lord Tyrion Forgering. He wants you to complete the Trial of the Champion. Now, the bad part about the Trial of the Champion is simply this. Um, remember that Wrath of the Lich King was had an emphasis in vehicle combat. And I don't necessarily hate a lot of that vehicle combat, but with the Ar with the uh, Argent Tournament came an additional piece of vehicle combat with mounts and basically jousting. And this is actually one of those times where I would agree with people, this was kind of dumb. Not much you could do about it, but yes, it was kind of dumb. So first of all, we have to pick up an Argent Lance, and we actually have to equip it. So where is the Argent Lance? Okay, well, let's just search for it. There we are. So I'm going to go ahead and put that somewhere where I know it is. Okay, so we're going to take this Argent Lance, and our first encounter will involve mounted combat. So let's go ahead and get on our mount. <coughs> so you have these four basic abilities, and you had to be able to use them in harmony. So first of all, defend, which would give you an additional shield. So you didn't take too much damage on your mount, because if you fell off your mount, you would either fail the daily quest that you were doing, or you would die in here. Because everything would be way too powerful. And then you have like a basic thrust, you have a charge, which is really the best way that you can use to take down people's shields and do major damage. And also you had shield breaker, which helps to break the shields. So let's go ahead and talk to uh, Jaren Sunsworn and get this first encounter out of the way. Are you ready for the first challenge, monk? I am ready! Remember the sun well. Okay, so we're going to find out who our challengers are because the various champions can be picked at random. The Sun Reavers are proud to present their representatives in this trial by combat. All right. So who do we get? And I'm just going to spoil this right now. If you're expecting a different look for the raid, no, it's the exact same place. Welcome, ch welcome, champions. Today, before the eyes of your leaders and peers, you will prove yourselves worthy of the combatants. And so it's Tyrion talking. Fight well, Horde, Loktar Ogar! Finally, a fight worth watching. So there's Thrall and uh, Garrosh, and then on the other side you get Varian and Jaina. I did not come here to watch animals tear at each other senselessly, Tyrion. They're worthy fighters, you'll see. You will first be facing three of the grand champions of the tournament. These first fierce contenders have beaten out all others to reach the pinnacle of skill in the joust. So yes, it's a jousting fight. Here comes the small but deadly Ambrose Boltspark, grand champion of Nomragon. So the gnomes of Nobergon cheer for Ambrose Brightspark. As you can see, we're gonna be jousting with all of them. That's not fun, but it's just something we'll have to deal with. Proud and strong, give a cheer for Marshal Jacob Alarius, grand champion of Stormwind. I actually don't know the Alliance classes, but we'll, I guess we'll find out. So we have Nobergon, we have Stormwind. The might of the dwarves is represented today by the grand champion of Iron Forge, Lana Stouthammer. Okay. <coughs> so good to know. 
So we have Stormwind, we have Norm Nobregon, and we have Iron Forge. So you could also get Exodar and Darnassus champions as well. No Worgen, no Goblins. They didn't exist at this point, so they and they weren't retroactively added. But unfortunately, what this means is that now we actually have to do the jousting. And this is not going to be fun. So, first of all, we have to take out their champions first, and then we'll take out the individual champions of their factions. So, already you can see we have a bit of an issue. I'm going to take these guys out as best as I can, but it does take some effort to do. Okay, wham! Oh, crap. You want to make sure to charge as much as you can, because it, it's the that's the damage dealer right there. Boom, and... Also, maintain very little distance because then they can actually use their shield breaker on you. And you can see I've already taken quite a bit of damage. Oh, I'm not happy about that. Okay, woo! And we'll charge there. Now, the sad part is, is that you have to go through... This is basically the trash of the first encounter. So we have to go through this aspect. Can't really avoid it. Dang it. I'm trying to charge you, and there we go. So now I've taken out them for Nomergon. Now we're going to take out Stormwind. We're going to go ahead and charge. Boom. Now, normally I, I would say, like, I love vehicle combat, but this is actually one of those few cases where I actually would agree with the people that hated it. I love I love me some Oculus. I don't, I don't actually hate that dungeon as much as most people do, but... I understand the hatred for Trial of the Champion because you had to endure this for the first little bit. And it's not fun. I'm not I'm not even going to pretend. It's it it was it was maybe fun the first couple of times you did it, but then then you started to see the rampant flaws that were within it. So, boom, there we go. Well, he charged me too, so that's not good. But that's all right, because I did that. And now we have to deal with the Rams of Iron Forge. So let's go ahead and take them out and bring up our shields. Oh, okay, one Ram down. But the problem is, is that my mount is now severely hurting. There we go. So there's another Iron Forge champion. <coughs> Okay, down to my last one. Then I actually have to do a, jo a joust with all three of the other champions. So that's going to be fun, right? Boom. And now they will attack, and I'm just going to pick a target. doesn't really matter who you attack at this given moment, but they are more difficult because of the fact... Yeah, there you go. And unfortunately, you can't do any damage to them because they will basically act like a trample. So, we. I'm gonna go ahead and grab another mount. Wee! Oh, and now I need to get out of here. I seriously need to get out of here. Okay, and I'm gonna lose this mount too. Oh, this this takes a while. I have no problem admitting that it sucks. I don't have a time. Oh, and now they're evading. That's not. That's even better. And I lost my mount again. Because technically you're supposed to have a group of five helping you out with this aspect and you can't because you're doing it on your own. Okay, so I'm going to just try and avoid them. Oh, they just nuke me. They just horribly nuke me. Oh, and I just got disconnected. So, quick magic cut while we get through this. There we go. I kind of cheated, but you can technically take them out with your ground attacks now. I remember back in the day you couldn't. Your your attacks did very little, but they at least let you now do it, do it that way. So I'm very happy about that. But now we actually have to face these champions off the mount. So the cool part about this is that you would get uh, a random encounter because, like I said, there's a Darnassus and an Exodar champion that adds something to it. I am not sure on the classes for these, but let's just take a wild guess. So I'm going to guess that the Stormwind Champion is either a warrior or a paladin. Probably a warrior. Um, 
because I think the Orgrimmar champion was also a warrior. The Noburgon champion is probably definitely a mage. Uh, and then I'm actually going to guess that the... <laughs> actually, I might be wrong. It might be the human champion is the... Uh, is the paladin and the dwarf champion is the war is a warrior because I can see two maces on her So let's go go ahead and uh, take these guys out Oh, and actually let's let's check out and see if they have any lore to them I don't think they do because trial of the champion wasn't that big a deal I don't think so yeah, you, you just get this basically the lich king is relentless his undead armies pouring forth to overwhelm his foes to prepare would-be champions against him high lord Tyrion forging presents a test of courage endurance and teamwork uh, let's see. <clears throat> His hardened veterans will weed out those who lack the stomach to face the ravening throngs of the undead. And let's see, three randoms. So, yeah, so Marshal Jacob Alarius is a warrior because he's got Mortal Strike and Bladestorm. Uh, and yes, Ambrose Boltspark is a mage. Uh, Colossus is a shaman, so that is the Exodar champion. And then Jeline Evansong is a hunter, and she's the Night Elf champion. And no, the Dwarf champion is in fact a rogue. So there we go. Let's go ahead and get this thing started. We'll take out the mage first. Sorry, Ambrose. There we go. So all three grand champions are defeated. Sorry, no individual lore for any of these guys, I'm afraid. So, well thought. Your next challenge comes from the Crusade's own ranks. You will be tested against their considerable prowess. So let's go ahead and grab these, and we need to talk to Jaren Sunsworn again to begin the next one. Now, thankfully, no more mounted combat after this, and this is one of those times where, again, I agree with you guys, the vehicle combat sucked, but we're past it. So let's go ahead and move on into the next encounter. That was an impressive display, but are you ready for your next challenge? I am ready for the next challenge! Okay. Oh. So our next challenge is going to be Edric the Pure. Now, you actually would get a choice between Are two you bosses. Up to the challenge, I will not hold back. I'm not saying we're we're missing out on stuff, but you would actually get two potential challengers. You could either get Edric the Pure, who is a paladin, and you'll have to fight him, or you could get Argent Confessor Pale Tress. Now, people might remember from my from my Utgard Pinnacle review, or not review, but video. Um, she was actually a really cool boss fight because halfway into it, she would basically call back past challenges to take you on. So you actually got to fight previous bosses that you had fought in the past, and it depended on who was in your party. So if they had actually encountered, say, Illidan Stormrage, you had a chance to get Illidan Stormrage as the shadow of the past that you have to take on. But unfortunately, we have Edric, so he's basically a wishy-washy paladin, as you can tell. Let's go ahead and make our way to him. Boom! Screw you! And I actually did like this concept that there were Argent Monks. Almost hinting at something to come. Boom! And... We'll go ahead and take these guys out. Now Edric the Pure! After the final meditation, we'll kick in. So here's Edric. Like I said, he is just a paladin of the Argent Crusade, and he is wishy-washy as crap. I, in fact, love his dialogue. It's great. Well, let's go ahead. Actually, really quick, let's uh, check into the lore for Edric the Pure. Oh, and, and there's one for Pale Dress. We'll do her too. Before heroes can challenge the forces of darkness, they must defeat agents of the light. High Lord Tyrion Forgering has selected a formidable paladin from the Argent Crusade to test combatants' metal. Edric will go to great lengths to call those without the moral conviction to enter Icecrown Citadel. And then finally, Argent Confessor Pale Dress. Before heroes can challenge the forces of darkness, they must defeat agents of the light. High Lord Tyrion Forgering has selected a formidable priest from the Argent Crusade to test combatants' metal. Pale Tress will do everything in her power, or everything in her power to ensure that only those with strong faith will confront the Scourge. And then she can summon memories that you could get, and it would depend. So, like, you could get Hogger. I know Hogger was one of them. Illidan Stormrage was another. Um... I'm not remembering too many others right off the bat, but they were bosses from both dungeons as well as raids. And I think there were even a few uh, Lich King ones, too, to, to bring those in. So, like, there was Ingvar the Plunderer from Utgard Pinnacle, or Utgard Keep. So, let's go ahead and take on Etric the Pure. Excellent. Look. Air run away now. 
Yeah, I run away now. Yeah, yes, you may run away. We have no further use for you. And the final boss of this, it was basically a three encounter deal. So let's go ahead and start, well, first of all, get from, uh, loot from Edric's cache. So, Eladar's battle star, nothing really that I didn't already have. Okay, and then Maladash, let's talk to Jiren. Malinore. You've impressed everyone here today with your skills in the arena. It is now time to be recognized before all as a champion of the tournament. I am ready! We will have justice. Well done. You have proven yourself worthy today. Oh, oh. What's that? Up near the rafters! Oh, uh, so somebody's somebody's coming in to make a challenge. You spoiled my grand entrance, rat. Oh no! Did you honestly think an agent of the Lich King would be bested on the field of your pathetic little tournament? <coughs> I've come to finish my task. Have you now? Okay. Well, good to know. Tear him apart! So, let's go ahead and go into the lore of the Black Knight. So, with the Argent Tournament came actually a bunch of new quests. Uh, not only dailies, but also a, a corresponding story where you actually had to defeat the Black Knight. And so let's go into his lore. The Lich King is cunning and will use treachery to thwart his enemies. To that end, he has dispatched the Black Knight to eliminate promising candidates from High Lord Tyrion Fordring's army. The undead's mere presence defiles the Crusader's Colosseum, and those who prevail against him will prove their worthiness. So we actually do need to take him out. Um, but yeah, you would actually take on a quest line to take on the Black Knight, and then eventually he would he would make a, a second appearance in the Trial of the Champions. So let's go ahead and take him out. This force. Here? It, it, it ends here? Oh, okay, cool. The cool part is, is that we don't actually have to worry about this. My rotting flesh was just getting in the way. Was it now? So, if you haven't figured it out by now, there is a joke being made here, and it is the Monty Python Black Knight. In fact, there are many achievements no with that. To best you. you don't, huh? Okay, well, unfortunately, we still killed you, so... There you go. Uh, Gaze of the Unknown... My congratulations, champions. Through trials both planned and unexpected, you have triumphed. Go now and rest. You've earned it. So let's go ahead and turn this quest in. I am honored to stand in the presence of such a fierce warrior. You have brought honor to yourself and to your people, Drakfu. And there you go. We get a little bit of experience for it. But that is the end of the Trial of the Champions. So that actually is going to go ahead and do it for this video. When we get back on Tuesday, we will be taking on the raid for patch 3.2 Call of the Crusade as we enter into the Crusaders Coliseum once again to answer the trial of the Crusader. We'll see you guys then.